Hello, welcome once again to Everyday HDR. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, single exposure tone mapping using Tiffin, uh, DFX 3.0, and HDRFX Pro by Nick Software. Um, there's a lot of controversy running around about uh, single exposure HDRs as actually being a uh, quote-unquote proper HDR, and I know I used to be in the same boat in the past, um, but with JPEGs, it's very difficult to pull a good quality uh, single exposure because of the compression process you lose all that contrast ratio that's really important for the tone mapping but raw files you know since they're they're large and they aren't compressed hold a lot of information that you can actually use for tone mapping so today I'm going to go ahead and start out with uh, using Nick Software's HDRFX Pro and what I love about Nick Software HDRFX Pro is it's probably the only uh, program out there, HDR processing program out there that has awesome presets, presets that actually work very well on images. So this is the uh, DFX, excuse me, this is the HDRFX Pro interface and my, you see all these presets on the left hand side, uh, one of my favorites is uh, the Realistic Strong there's a you know, plethora of uh, presets here that are actually pretty helpful. Some of them are a little bit much, uh, like this one is a little too much for me, but um, I really do like the realistic strong. So I'm just going to go ahead and press OK. Now, it's a little too saturated for me, but I'll deal with that later. I could probably dock the saturation in here, but right now I'm just using it for the preset. I'm going to take that preset and go with it press OK. HDRFX did a, a great job of minimizing the amount of sliders it takes to make an HDR image. And a lot of times I, I do not use presets ever, but HDRFX Pro has it. They've got awesome presets that just work. So for me this is a little too heavy on the yellow side. So I'm going to go ahead and open a uh, adjustment layer for hue saturation, go into the yellows, and dock the yellows a little bit. Put them more on the lighter side. And that's about good, but I don't really like what it did to uh, how I lost my caterpillar there. So I'm going to go ahead and mask that out and bring that stuff back. Why do I have a flower brush? No, oh, good, good question, Blake. What were you doing with the flower brush? Okay. So bring back my caterpillar a little bit, give some, give that caterpillar some warmth against that. So now that I have a good quality um, base to start with, I'm going to go ahead and press Control shift alt e and then go up to Filter, and then go to Tiffin DFX, version 3.0. And you can already see that I've done some work with this, because uh, the great thing about Tiffin is that it remembers all of the uh, setups that you had from a previous version. So you can see I've done a vignette, I've done a bleach bypass, and I've done key light. And these are all really very simple presets that I'm going to go over real quick. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that layer. I'm going to delete this layer, and then I'm going to delete this layer. So now I'm going to go ahead and do the uh, key light first. So go to light, and then go to key light. And I, I really like what that does to the image. If, if you really want to see how it works, you know, you can press this. Uh, a uh, little uh, rectangle with a little dot mark on it that basically gives you this bar that you can drag across and see what it's doing to your image as you scroll it back and forth and it's, it really is just adding a nice uh, amount of drama to it it's pushing back my mid-tones kind of blowing them out a little bit but giving me some detail while it does it so I really like that so I'm going to go ahead and stick this right there so we can see kind of half and half what's going on with our image as we go through this let me actually go this way with it there we go so now I'm going to duplicate the layer, and I'm going to add the bleach bypass. You go to Film Lab, you go to Bleach Bypass, and that's a little too much for me. I'm going to go with the, the bleep, bleach bypass number one. Now I'm going to duplicate the layer again, and I'm going to toss a vignette on this. And the vignettes in uh, Tiffin tend to be pretty strong. Um, let me find the vignette first. Where are we at? Vignette, vignette. 
that's the tricky part. There we go. It's under lens. Imagine that. So now I'm going to go to the circular black. And you can see it's a very dark vignette. I'm not a big fan of dark vignettes. I like how it singles out the image, but it's a little too dark for me. So that's a great thing about Tiffin is if you don't like what's going on with the filter, you can very simply move it around by, uh, by grabbing, grabbing that little uh, rectangle or square. I'm going to go and put it back right back where it was. But the other thing you can capture with this is parameters. You can click on the parameters and you can dock the opacity really easily. So now I've got a pretty good solid image. Now every one of the filters on uh, TIFF and DFX has parameters that you can adjust accordingly as you see fit. If you don't like what they've got going on, don't worry about it. Just go into the parameters and do it yourself. Now when you're done, you can also save those presets. You can also go to the preset and actually make this a favorite. So you know, I was, I was scrolling around looking for that vignette like crazy. Well, now if I go to my favorites, the vignette is now in my favorites. The circular black vignette is right here in my favorites, as is my bleach bypass and the point of my key light. So I'm going to go ahead and process that. I do love the DFX program, but sometimes it is kind of difficult to navigate. But that's kind of the fun of it, is that as you're navigating through it, you're going to find things in there that you uh, might not have used, but actually really like. So you can see how far we've come with this. Uh, if we go ahead and go into History and go to Open, we went from a very washed out looking uh, picture of a caterpillar on a leaf, very boring, very drab. And what we've come up with is something that's a little bit more uh, poignant. It definitely pulls the focus a little bit more onto that caterpillar and is, is much more detailed. If you want to dock that detail, you can go ahead and do so by uh, lowering the opacity on that, kind of bringing back some of the outside stuff. And that's right, that's, that's it. Two uh, very simple programs to make a much better HDR image. So it's all about making the image. Um, it started out as something very simple, and we ended with something that you know, it's, it's show worthy now, you know, not maybe not put it on a wall in a gallery, but it's definitely better than that. All right, so I hope that helps you, and uh, have a good weekend.